What's good everyone, Peter here, aka StudyMate, back with my second video in my Numerai Starter Pack series, where I give you everything you need to make your own model in the Numerai Tournament, which you could eventually stake on. In today's video, we're gonna be going over the tournament data. So I'm gonna be taking a look at last month's super massive data launch. I'm gonna go over how to download the data for the tournament. And then lastly, we're gonna kind of break down the data, take a look at what's exactly in there and do a little bit of analysis around that. So with that being said, let's jump into it. So the first thing to talk about is the super massive data launch that was released last month. Now this included an increase in the targets, the training data, and the amount of features that we have for the Numerai tournament. Now, if you are a new user and this is you're completely new to the tournament, there's not much of a difference for you because the learning curve is pretty much going to be the same to jump in and submit your first model. But if you are an existing user and still getting your feet wet, maybe you had one or two models that you were working on, there is a little bit of a difference in the structure of the data that I'm going to be covering in just a little bit. So do know that you need to retrain your models and take a look at accommodating the new data if you did have one or two models created already and were just a relatively new user. But the good thing is uh, what we are seeing with the new data is that it without a doubt is a good thing and is positive for your model's performance. So good to see and definitely worth making the move over from the legacy data. The next thing I'm going to cover is accessing the data. There are two main ways I'm going to access the data today. The first one is going to be just a manual download from the Numerai website off their dashboard. And the second is going to be using the Numer API. The first way of downloading the data is fine if you are still getting into things and want to just get your hands on the data for your first submission. There's nothing wrong with that. But I will say the second one using the Numer API is definitely the preferred way of getting the data. As down the line, when we want to automate our submissions and look at some of the other cool features they have, it's definitely a lot easier and the preferred way to go. Now, for both of those, we are still, however, going to be using Pandas and Dask. No matter how you actually obtain the data, want to eventually put it into a data frame as that's gonna really make our lives easier when trying to use the data so I am going to use uh, Dask as I, on my local machine, need a little bit of help allocating the memory to use the new tournament data as it is quite a bit larger than the legacy data. But depending on your local machine or if you end up using some third party service, you might be totally okay just using Pandas. So let's take a look at the manual download. For the manual download, I have a screenshot here of the Numerai dashboard in this red box here you'll find firstly the da download data button. So this is gonna get you a zip file of all of the files you need for the new data set. So this is gonna come with the uh, training, tournament and validation uh, CSVs. And secondly, you'll have the download legacy data button. Now this is if you want to get, again, the old data set, maybe just for reference, or if you still have a model that relies on it, then you still have an option to get that there. So nothing too much here, but just to give you an idea of where to find that on the dashboard. Now, the second way we're gonna be looking at getting data is through the Numer API. First thing you're gonna to need to do, if you haven't already, is install Numer API. Now, I have that commented out here because I've already done so on my local machine. I also have some pre-typed imports here that I'm for all of the libraries that I'm gonna be using in this notebook. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in really quickly. Now, the first one I have here is Pathlib library for some of the downloads later on. I also have my Dask data frame, which we're going to be storing the data inside of once we have it downloaded. Also importing my Numer API as you have to do that after you install it, as well as matplotlib for some of the visualizations down the line. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and run this cell here. And now that I've done that, we can go ahead and actually create an instance of our Numer API. Now I'm gonna store this in a variable, oops, I have cat blocks on, called NAPI. And this is just going to be equal to Numer API dot new, oops, Numer API. Now, with that being uh, said, I can now refer to this new NAPI variable to list off some of the available data sets that we can download. To do that, I need to do NAPI.list underscore data sets. And if I go ahead and run that, 
what we'll see is we get back a list of all of the available data sets that we can download. Now, we have a few example data sets at first, just example files, and then we have the four different types of files that we can use. So live, tournament, training, and validation. No need to go too in depth on that. I'm gonna be covering that in a little bit, but the two things I wanna point out here are that one, for the file formats. So as you can see, for all of the different types of files, we have CSVs and parquets. Now we're gonna be using the parquet files and I wasn't too familiar with these with parquets before this. And if you're not as well, that's totally okay. The whole idea behind them that we just need to understand when using them is that they're essentially just optimized for data storage. They're going to be used in the exact same way as you would a CSV. So just think of them as just a more efficient CSV file. Secondly, I wanna point out for the data formats, as you can see here, we have access to this in eight file as well as the regular files. Now, the reason why the Numeri team does this is because again, the super massive data update gave us access to more data, but for some people that might be too much memory to be able to process all of the data. So what the in eight, data format does for us is it converts a lot of the data into integers, which reduces the amount of memory needed to work with the data. And in our case, I definitely need that because I did not have enough RAM to work with all the data set in its regular format, uh, which is all floats. So that's why we're gonna be using the Numeri training data int 8 dot parquet. So now that we've figured out what file we wanna download, let's look at how we can actually do that with the Numeri API. So I'm gonna scroll down a little bit into my next cell. And the first thing we need to do is make a variable for where we want to download this file from the Numer API. I'm gonna call this my train parquet path. And the path in this case, because I'm fine with it being in the same folder as my notebook, it's just gonna be the name of the file. So we're gonna call this, we're gonna keep the same name. So I'm actually just gonna be lazy and copy the name of the file that we want. And I'm gonna have this here. Awesome. So now that we've got our variable for the path of the file we want, we can go ahead and refer back to our NAPI variable. And from here, just call the download underscore dataset method. Now, the first thing we need to give to the download dataset method is what file we want which again is just going to be the numeri training data in 8.parquet. And the second thing is where we want to store it. So again, this is going to be our train underscore parquet underscore path. Awesome. So now that I have all this, I can go ahead and run this cell. And what you'll see is that it kicked off this download. Again, it might take a little bit depending on your internet because it is about a gig um, large for the parquet file. So I'm gonna do a quick cut for the rest of this. See you soon. Okay, we're back. So I've wrapped up my download. Uh, we can double check it here in my, if I just drag over really quickly, my Jupyter root, as you can see, I now have this numeri training data in 8.parquet file. It's a gig large and just downloaded a couple of seconds ago. So if you do uh, exactly what I did, you'll have the same result. What I can do now is get a little bit more choosy. Again, we're gonna not just need the training data, we're gonna need the validation data, the test or the live data and the tournament data. So we're gonna need one of each of all of these four file types in both of our data format as well as our file format. So we're using Parquet and Int8. So we're gonna need to get all four of those for each of these uh, different types of files. So what we can do is instead of going one by one, we can make a cool little for loop to make this a little bit easier on ourselves. What we first need to do to do that is make a variable for the current round. So this is gonna, this data, especially for the live and tournament data is going to be released on a weekly basis according to the round we're gonna need a way to get that on a weekly basis. Now, that's offered through the Numer API. 
So I can go ahead and refer back to my end API variable. And I'm going to use the get current round method. And that's going to just tell me what round it is depending on the week. Before I move on, I do want to give a quick shout out to the Rocket Chat. That's where I got the majority of the next section of my code. If you're not already in there, again, you should join ASAP. There's a ton of good stuff that people just put out for free and are really cool about it. So shout out to them for this code. I don't have, I, it's been a while, so I don't have the exact person who posted it. I think it might've been Jordy. So thank you, Jordy. If it was you. And if it wasn't, then sorry for forgetting who you were. <laughs> but to continue, we're going to make a for loop. Okay. And we're just going to loop through all of the files in our list data sets method. So we're going to go ahead and do for every file in our n API dot list underscore data sets. And what we're going to do is just do the exact check that we were doing before to make sure that the file is in our specific data format and file format. So we're going to check if we're looking for parquet. So we're going to make sure that's in the file name. And the second thing we were looking for was int eight. So as long as those two things are in our file name, then we're good to continue. Now, the second thing we want to do is because I just mentioned only the live and tournament data are going to vary on a week to week basis. What we are going to check for now is if the name of the file is either training or validation, because those two are going to stay rather static. There are, there is a chance that there might be some small changes, but for the most part, we're not going to have to get those on a weekly basis. So what we're going to do is check if it's either training or if it's validation. And if so, we want to store this separately from the live and tournament data. So what we're going to do is store this using the, well, we're going to download it, sorry, using the download data set method that we just used. Now, again, we're going to pass in the first thing is what file we want. So we can use this file variable from our for loop. And the second thing we can do is we'll store it in this data folder. And we can just store it at the, again, we can keep the same name. So we're just saying here, create a folder named data. And then inside of that folder, just create a file of the same name as the file that we're currently looking at. And that's all we're going to do for the training and validation, because those are going to be rather static again. However, if it's not training or validation, so it's either live or tournament, what we want to do, and this is where we're going to use the uh, path lib a little bit, is we want to create a new folder for the current round. So that's where we're going to use our current round variable that we got earlier using the Numer API. And from here, we're going to use the make directory uh, method. And we're just going to pass in a couple parameters. So exist, sorry, e underscore OK equals to true. And parents is equal to true. So we firstly make a new folder for that round, that week's round. And then from there, now that we have a folder for the data, we can go ahead and again, use the download data set method to download the, the tournament and live data into that new folder. So again, we're going to use the download data set method the same way, just passing in the file. And then from there, we need to be a bit more specific here. We can't just say the file, download it as the file name. We have to now add in this current round oops, to the data. And then from here, we can say file. So in our data folder, at the new folder we just made with this line here, and then with the same name as the file that we want to download. And that's it. 
So if I go ahead and run this now, what we'll see is it's going to get me four different files. So two for the training and validation, and then two for the tournament and live inside of the whatever current round is. Now this is gonna take a little bit because it's four different files. So I'm gonna go ahead and do another cut here. See you soon. All right, we back. So now that I've got everything downloaded, I can just show it off really quickly. As you can see, so now we have this data folder inside of here. We'll have our training and validation. Awesome, in eight, parquet, beautiful. And then we'll also have a folder for the current round. Now, when I'm recording this, we are in round 285. So if I go in here, as you can see, we'll have our live and tournament data in eight, parquet, beautiful. So we're now good to go. And that's where I'm going to call it for today. This video took a little bit longer than I expected. So I'm going to break it up into two parts. I want to aim for around that 10 to 15 mark per subject. So in the next one, I'll be finishing off this topic. In today's video, we saw how to download the tournament data from either the Numeri dashboard or from the Numer API. We looked at how to distinguish the two different data formats as well as the different file formats. And in the next video, we're gonna look at how to load the data into a data frame and then do some basic analysis on the features, eras, and so on. So look forward to seeing you then. Thanks for watching. Peace.